it wasn't like, you know, all expenses paid vacation to Morocco, like a pop-up window. I think I would have looked at that differently. It was one thing and then another thing. And it unfolded in this organic way that I now see was by design until all of a sudden, surprise, I'm holding the bag. Anna Delvey is a fictitious character, but Anna Sorokin is a girl who was born outside of Moscow, Russia, who moved to New York in 2016 and pretended to be a German heiress. No, I was pretty sure I was her only friend, aside from the staff at the hotel where she was living. And I was close friends with Anna for a little over two months. That's like a span of weeks. One, she was very consistent in her storytelling. She told the same people the same things about her background so that whatever you didn't hear from her, you would hear from other people, and it was a house of cards. Also, this is a, a young woman who was fooling hedge funds and banks, places that have checks in place to prevent fraud, and she still got away with it. In 2017, when she checked into a hotel, Anna established the I'll pay for everything dynamic because she didn't often leave the hotel and she would ask me to come by on my way to and from work and I would go for drinks or dinner and she would sign everything to her hotel room and she said, you work harder for your money than I ever have. I think my friendship was useful to Anna in many ways. The fact that I worked at Vanity Fair gave her a degree of validity by association. So she would often say to business people, oh, you should meet my friend Rachel. She works at Vanity Fair. But for the most part, I think we just enjoyed each other's company until things went very wrong. She pitched the idea as though it were gonna be a business expense for her. She wanted to make a documentary about the creation of her art foundation. So up front, she said she was gonna pay for the villa. So she actually booked this villa with three bedrooms before she knew who she wanted to invite. I was along, and then it was the personal trainer and the videographer, and I said, well, since you're essentially hiring them to do a job, they're gonna expect you to pay for their expenses. And she's like, well, and I'd love to get yours too. To which I said, that's really not necessary. It wasn't like, you know, all expenses paid vacation to Morocco, like a pop-up window. I think I would have looked at that differently. It was one thing and then another thing until all of a sudden, surprise, I'm holding the bag. So it started with the flights that I ended up booking for four travelers one way the day we were leaving. Then we get to the airport and I checked her wallet which in, in hindsight is like an almost comical red flag. We get to Marrakesh and go to the Medina. Anna picks out $1,300 worth of dresses. I didn't feel it was my position to question her spending, um, except when she got to the cash register and tried to use her card, it didn't go through. So, oh, I already owe you money that I'm wearing you next week. Can we just add this to it? Okay, but the hotel was a different thing. My last full day in Marrakesh, I wake up and there are two managers who come into the villa and refuse to leave without a functioning credit card. Anna asked me to use my card for now. I'm also told that the final bill will be settled when we check out. I'm leaving before Anna, so I think, well, she's gonna have to take care of this before she leaves. I go to France for work, I land and realize the whole thing's going on my cards. My total expenses were $62,000. That is more than I made in a year. Anna strung me along for over two months, promising that reimbursement was on the way. She was still in touch every day. She didn't just disappear. I think that would have been a clearer red flag. Instead, she was in constant contact with a variety of excuses before I could even ask what was going on. I think though, when she gets back in New York, she can go to the bank, she can talk to her bankers, she can get everything squared away. More time goes by, still no wire. She starts to put me in touch with her family's personal accountant, a woman named Bettina Wagner who assured me that everything would be taken care of right away, and Bettina was Anna. Amex was calling me uh, routinely asking about these large amounts that were on my credit cards. Meanwhile, I've accepted loans from very close friends who were helping me with like my living expenses and rent and things like that. Of course, I got to a point where I was like, I have to seek alternate resolutions. This isn't going anywhere. The first lawyer that I got up the nerve to call, I tell the story as, you know, succinctly as possible, and he cuts me off before I can even finish and says, well, did you learn your lesson? I was like, excuse me? And he goes, do you wanna pay for my son's medical school too? So I ruled out the lawyers. Then I went to the police. I spoke with a lieutenant who said, because it was in Morocco, there's nothing we can do, but with your face, you could start a GoFundMe page to get your money back. 
but I emailed the district attorney's office and I said, I have information about this person. I think she's a con artist and I'd really like to speak with someone as soon as possible. They said, we think you're right. We'd like you to come in. Anna was supposed to show up in court on September 5th, 2017 for these misdemeanor offenses that had come out in the New York Post and the Daily News. She skipped her court date. And when she skipped court, the NYPD and the DA's office called me and asked if I were to text her whether she'd respond. And at that point, I had to take a more active role in the investigation. I started to pick away at where she was. She said she's in California. She was in a rehab. True to form, she had checked into Passages, which is, I think, the most expensive rehab in the country. And then, of course, relayed that information to the NYPD, who told the LAPD. Then she suggested we get together. I asked her to meet me at Jones on 3rd, and that morning when she left the rehab facility, she was arrested. I was really nervous to see Anna in court. I didn't look at her until I was asked to identify her as the defendant, and when I looked at her and pointed, she was looking me dead in the eye from behind her glasses, and she was smirking, which had probably the opposite effect of what she intended. It actually just made her seem juvenile to me and confirmed her, not that I needed more confirmation, but confirmed her as a sociopath, and it, it really just steeled my resolve to, to continue with the path that I was on and what I had come there to do. Anna was convicted of fraud. She was found not guilty on the charge regarding me. But I was able to make money back through the book deal, so I repaid the loans I had to take from family friends. And then I also finally was protected by American Express for the La Mamunia charge. No. She said that she wasn't sorry. She wasn't sorry for any of it. She'd be lying if she said she was sorry um, to herself and everyone. And my take on that is well, actually, I found it surprising because I thought it was the most self-reflective thing I'd ever heard her say. Um, I also thought it was remarkably honest for someone who's a serial liar.